Hello everybody, this is Michael Walhorn. I know most of you know me as Big Mike. I have my channel Heavy M Productions here on YouTube. I've been feeling a little bit down the past couple of days. I'm going to come clean as to why that is. I'm going to do my best to hold myself together. You guys know I wear my emotions on all my sleeves. So here it goes. As many of you may or may not know, I am a Lyft driver out here in Los Angeles. It is about the only way I can make ends meet. I must work long hours in order to make the funding that I need. Apart from that, I have assistance, if need be, from my father to help me with my rent. The car I drive is a 2010 Toyota Prius. It is a gold color. It's had some wear and damage on it. I affectionately named her Goldie because of the paint job. She's been having some issues lately. My check engine light's been coming on, and I had the OBD reader from AutoZone tell me that my vehicle has a P420 and a P456. Commonly, the P420 code is associated with the catalytic converter. Catalytic converters are not a cheap fix. You can purchase cheap catalytic converters, but here in the state of California, they must be a certain style in order to pass what's called a smog test. My vehicle was taken to a Toyota dealership in mid-November, and it had some diagnosis done to it. They confirmed that it needed a new catalytic converter and a new charcoal fuel canister. But don't just take my word for it. Have a little look at this video right here. Hello and good afternoon. My name is Jason. I'm your Toyota technician for the day. Did the inspection on your vehicle and we're going to walk you around today and show you what we found. Okay, first of all, we did check all your tires. They did measure at a four and a five and a six in the front uh, and a six and a nine in the rear. So your tires are doing decent right now. No need to worry about those right now. A couple of things to address today would be uh, a leaking timing cover. As you can see, the oil is bleeding completely down off your timing cover off your engine bay. And we do want to recommend to go ahead and replace those seals and seal that back up so you're not leaking and burning off any extra oil than you need to. Um, we did also take a look at the address for the coolant leaking. As you can see, it is bleeding down. Uh, it only is bleeding down from right on above from where that's at right there, which is your coolant reservoir, which is what you fill your uh, coolant with. Uh, we did also notice that your water pump is brand new and been replaced. Um, so right now, it looks like that it might be just that, that the reservoir was overflowing. And if you'd like, we can also do a pressure check for you too. Um, other than that, that's all we've uh, seen for any type of coolant leak. I did check any of the extra hoses that are also sitting up front and also the radiator that's sitting right around over here and not really seeing anything that's leaking for coolant wise. Okay, it was brought to my attention that you did have two codes from AutoZone, uh, one being a P0420, which is a catalytic converter code. So which means the inside of this catalytic converter has failed and it is recommended that that is replaced for emissions um, and the last but not least would be a code for your charcoal canister. Now your charcoal canister has failed for your emissions cycle and it is not passing the emissions for the vehicle. So we are going to recommend to go ahead and replace that. So that was the technician telling me what I need. When I got the estimate of the repairs, I thought to myself, there's just no way in hell I can get this done. When I went on my holiday, I came back and I said to myself, you know what? I'm going to get a second opinion. Maybe they didn't do a great diagnostic at this Toyota. So I went to the primary one in downtown Los Angeles on Figueroa Street. And after some conclusive search, they have confirmed that the vehicle does need a new catalytic converter and a new charcoal canister. But they've also confirmed something else. The vehicle needs possibly a new engine. Now, I will give you a little look here really fast at this clip, and you can take a look and see right now the condition of my engine. Have a look at this. Good morning. This is Ezekiel, Toyota Master Technician once again. Uh, today, this morning, we're proceeding with the overnight um, diagnosis. As I mentioned, we're going to have the system under uh, 
the cooling system under pressure. Uh, this morning, you can see it's dropped pressure. So I've gone ahead and uh, removed your spark plugs. I did found it, find your spark plugs being fouled in a, a residual. It looks a little wet. Not, uh, due to the coolant looking a little um, discolored, not sure if you've been topping off. As your reservoir, you can see uh, it's a very light pink color coolant compared to uh, your inverter. It should be a little brighter either way. Um, <clears throat> I see residual on the actual cylinder heads. Right now I have it on cylinder four since that was one of the most, a uh, little more moist of all the four spark plugs. So this is looking at the top of the cylinder head. As you can see, there has been uh, coolant contamination. That piston looks very clean. Uh, I'm gonna show you the sidewalls. As you can see, sorry about the glare, just too much light on the actual camera, but there's moisture there, cooling residual going through uh, the combustion chamber. And as you can see, we're catching it on the cylinder walls, concluding that um, the vehicle has internal damages already. So now what I'm recommending is removing your cylinder heads. Once removed, we have to check for warp pitch on the cylinder heads as well as the inch and short block. And just to confirm if the cylinder heads the short block is already usable if there's no existing warpage. If it's within tolerance, we can go, go ahead and proceed with the um, cylinder head gasket replacement and the rest of the seals and, of course, valve cover and whatever we might find leaking. Um, at the moment, I'm recommending teardown and go from there. Your car does have a very high miles, so more than likely there's going to be uh, multiple um, internal uh, wear, which is normal because of the mileage. So, like I said, this is not... Uh, a concluded diagnosis as teardown is required. From there on, we will proceed with whatever repair is needed. Um, it's either going to be the head gasket and uh, resetting the whole system back together or a whole engine block, long block unit r and &R. If you have any questions, feel free to contact your service advisor. And once again, thank you for choosing Toyota of Downtown Los Angeles. I am very distraught about this because I was told one thing, the catalytic converter. And that was on the top of the list of priorities. And I thought to myself, maybe if, you know, my car is sick, so to speak, because the check engine light is on, maybe if I work hard enough, I can put enough money aside to get this catalytic converter taken care of. I was advised by the service technician that's not a good idea because it could cause a trickle-down effect, which could hurt other major components of the car such as the engine. And as you've seen from the video, they talked about possibly replacing the head gasket or doing a takedown of the engine. This is a very, very expensive procedure and it must be done before the catalytic converter is replaced. I have right here the paperwork from Toyota. As you can see, it's dated January 13th. And just for the catalytic converter alone, they wanted $3,600. That's just the catalytic converter. To replace the engine on my vehicle, a used engine, you can take a look at this little screenshot from this site called JDM. They sell engines and they start out at just over $1,300. That's a used engine. The labor for this engine is at least 16 hours. On average most dealerships and even auto body shops and so on and so forth have told me that it would take at least a week to replace the engine so I've gone from having an issue with the catalytic converter and the charcoal canister to now needing a new engine I thought about doing the replacement of the uh, head gasket as well as looking at other things like the timing cover seals because as it showed in the video it was leaking oil and then it occurred to me because my vehicle has so many miles on it you know what let's go let's go take a little trip outside real quick let's go outside and have a look at the car so I figured let's step outside let me actually show you guys the car in question that really needs the help right here this is Goldie it's a 2010 Toyota Prius I know she's got some damage. She's old. She's really been through it, but you know, she's got it where it counts. Now, let's go ahead and get our OBD reader down here. 
Let's plug her in. And I'll go ahead and show you guys the codes that I have. Let's put that down there. Let's turn on the engine. And there is the dreaded check engine light. Car's got 327,000, if this thing will focus, 327,987 miles. Let's go ahead and check the engine. As you can see, we got our red triangle. Let's check the engine. Read codes. Yep, there is that dreaded 420. Catalyst system efficiency below threshold. Whoops. There's the 456 EVAP code, small leak detected. Another 420 pending, another 456 pending, permanent 420, permanent 456. So as you guys can see now, from the condition of the car, the amount of miles it has on it, and you've seen the proof from my personal OBD reader, my car is in very bad shape. It needs three major things. And I have to humble myself at this point and ask all of you out there, not just in the United States, but even Australia, I need help. And I don't mean emotional. I mean financial. I've narrowed down a lot of the work that needs to be done to purchase a engine like you guys saw it's over thirteen hundred dollars to get a new approved cal catalytic converter from the toyota dealership is going to be over eighteen hundred dollars to get the charcoal canister is about five hundred dollars i know this amount combined is basically four grand and then I'm going to have to take all this to a mechanic. God only knows what they'll charge. I know it's not going to be cheap. To confess, one person I spoke to about just replacing the engine, they wanted $1,400, and they said it would take a full week to do this. I don't have money. I don't... I'm in that percentile of people living in the United States who live paycheck to paycheck. I live here in Southern California. I live in a house that's over $2,400 a month. I was doing okay, not great, not great, but okay before this wrench was tossed into the gears of my life. This wasn't something I planned on. I know that they say life happens, but this is a very serious thing and I need I need all the help I can get if possible and I know a lot of you are going to have questions for example you'll notice the comments are disabled on this video there's a reason for that I don't want anyone making snarky remarks or trying to say things that they're not serious about because this is very 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 serious I would not be making this video for the whole world to see if I wasn't. I've thought about this. I thought about an amount that I'm asking for, for assistance. I am asking a very large amount. I'm asking for $5,000. I'm asking for that to cover at least the catalytic converter and the engine purchases as well as the repairs and again I know like I said some of you are gonna have questions for example a lot of you are probably thinking well I see on social media that you go to Disneyland and you go to the movies all the time how are you doing that if your car is in such a state of disrepair I'll give you a few reasons number one my pass is paid for for Disneyland that's taken care of my passes for AMC and the New Beverly Cinema that 
repertory theater, I see films on 35 millimeter. Those are also on passes that are paid for. So you might be thinking, well, how are you getting to these places? Disneyland is an 18 mile drive east. I don't go all the time. I go maybe once or twice a month, if that. The AMC, eight miles south. The New Beverly Cinema, 11 miles northwest. If I have a full work day, it's going to be 200 miles a day. At any moment, I could pick up someone who needs to go really far distances. It's completely variable. There's no guarantee. And I know one of the most important things that you guys are probably going to ask is, just get another job. Sure, I'll do that. I have no problem doing that. Problem. Most jobs are not going to be able to pay me enough per hour to cover the cost to fix my vehicle and pay my rent and my bills fast enough. Even if I do get a possible job interview, it's usually going to take about a week for that interview. Then the interview is going to turn into typically like a second interview, and that's another five days. Then getting hired and getting the first paycheck and stuff, it's going to be a grand process of nearly a month before I even get my first paycheck. And it's nowhere near going to be the amount to not only pay for these repairs, but even to pay my rent. What am I going to do for rent in the meantime? I'll tell you what, my dad has been nice enough to tell me he will assist me. But that's it. He's not going to always do it. He's doing this as a favor, as a courtesy. And I know, especially out there, we are all feeling the clench. We are feeling the squeeze. I know it's a whole new year. This isn't something I anticipated. It's not something anybody has anticipated. You would have never thought the guy who's trying Vegemite with his dad last week in Orlando, coming back from his holiday, would be making a video the day after Martin Luther King Jr.'s birthday to ask for $5,000. I didn't anticipate doing this, but I'm doing it now because I'm begging you guys because I don't have a choice. You guys have seen the proof. You've seen the paperwork. You've seen the car. I speak the truth. I'm not able to make this money fast enough on my own to support myself. I'm going to have to start going to food banks to to get my meals. I'm being very serious here. This is, uh, it's not what I thought was going to happen. It, it, it really wasn't. This was not, this was not in my plan for this year. And I know I spoke a few days ago about making a members only page and starting to charge for my channel. That's not happening. Not anytime soon. I can't in good conscience ask people out there to pay for my YouTube channel and help me out with trying to get my car fixed. That doesn't sit right with me. So I'll tell you what, if anybody out there is kind enough to assist me, whatever requests that you guys have, I'll honor it. I'll honor as much as I can for whatever videos, whatever it is, it doesn't matter what it is. You can contact me through my social media and my email. Right now above you is the GoFundMe link. There is also my Cash App link as well as the Zelle link. If you can help me, great. If you can't, great. Each and every person who does help me, and especially if we reach that goal, every single person will not only get a shout out, they will each individually get what they've requested on video, whatever the reaction is, for a full month straight each. It's the best I can do. Because once this car does get fixed, I got to get out there and bust my back, get back on that road. I have to make money. I, I didn't intend for this to happen, like I said once again, but life happens. And sometimes we got to ask for help. And I'm asking for help right now because I really need it. And... I just would really appreciate it. I mean this from the bottom of my heart. If anybody's out there and willing to help me, thank you so much. Uh, as you can see, the 
Information is listed on the GoFundMe. The link is down in the description below. Donate whatever you can, if you can. I just, I really need y'all's help. And thank you so much again. And again, if you need any more contact information, it's going to be at the following end of this screen. Thank you guys once again. Have a good day and bless you.